This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. It's been a long time. Welcome, family, to another wonderful, edutaining, infotaining edition of The Out of His Thinks, Thought Provocateur. I'm your host for the Empowerment Segment, Brother Ron, also known as R2, C2, H2, The Art of His. Welcome to the We All Be Info Movement, where knowledge is the currency of the universe. I just want to give my opinion out there about the situation. It's been a busy news cycle. Something always popping off somewhere in the country. But uh, uh, somebody asked my opinion on the situation with the uh, the MSs. You know, the mass S's. The mass, you know, shootings. Uh, I have been late in giving my opinion, just accessing the information. Just let it, let it, it marinate in my mind. Uh, thoughts about what's really going on. Uh, you know, thinking about what will Baba Dick Gregory think? Uh, putting my magic glasses on. Can't really take them off, but really focusing in on what I'm seeing is going on with the patterns. And it's important to note that uh, things happen in cycles like the seasons based on numbers, yada, yada, yada. But think about it this way. Because people say, well, why is this stuff happening now? I said, it's it always been happening. Have we been paying attention? Do we understand the value of researching history? Her story, his story, our story, right? Think about what was going on 50 years ago in the country. It was, what, 1969? Remember Charles Manson and the family? Not P. Diddy and the family. Charles Manson was a musician, too, a failed musician. But you should check out some of Charles Manson's uh, music. It's very fascinating. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, looking at Hitler's uh, paintings. Yeah, Hitler was a visual artist, a failed visual artist. And Charles Manson was a failed musician. What if they had succeeded in, you know, Hitler being a painter and Charles Manson being a, a musician? Because you know that Charles Manson befriended uh, Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys, I believe. He actually, you know, lived with Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys. I think he thought that Dennis Wilson was going to help him, you know, become a music star. Who know? But you know the fa the, the murders, Sharon Tate, the pregnant wife of filmmaker Roman Polanski, and some of her friends and other people were killed. Uh, Charles Manson uh, allegedly wanted to start a race war, a helter skelter, supposedly. You know, I heard things that they say Charles Manson was a deep cover agent. You know, he spent up to that point, most of his life in and out of prison, spent a majority of his life in prison. But they said that he could have been an agent, a uh, uh, MK Ultra person. I don't know. But uh, think about what happened 100 years ago. That was a, what, the Summer of Love, 69. Was that the Summer of Love? Think about the Red Summer of 1919, where you had all these race massacres and so called riots around the country targeting black people. You have lynchings. Uh, massacres, race massacres saying, well, black men raping white women or keep Negroes in their place. You know, black folks showed their bravery in World War One. Some of the most decorated union units, excuse me, from America were segregated units featuring black men. Think about the New York National 15th Regiment known as the Harlem Hellfighters, uh, the 369th Regiment overseas for the French. I mean, they wanted to cry the girl. That's the highest award you get for military valor in France, equivalent to the U.S. Congressional Medal of Honor. That's my Lieutenant James Reese Europe, a lead the Harlem Hellfighters Jazz Band, which brought jazz to Europe. Uh, ironic, his name is was Europe. Uh, you had black men showing their bravery, saying, well, if we could make the world safe for democracy abroad, surely we could be safe and be Americans and practice uh, democracy at home. But you had black men being lynched in uniforms coming home. Uh, matter of fact, you know, it's goddamn Lieutenant Charles Hamilton Houston. 
who became the mentor for Thurgood Marshall. This a black man was the dean of Howard Law School, was over the NAACP. Yes, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. He was my almost lynching full uniform uh, over in France because American doughboys, these are American white soldiers, were jealous at the fact that the black men were getting all the white women. You understand? So he almost was lynched overseas. Thank God he wasn't. Uh, but that's the reality. So you had the Klan was in power 100 years ago, right? You had the Klan. They was at their height of power by the 1920s. They would have membership in the in the around four million. We had Klansmen who were governors, senators, mayors, um, police chiefs, fire chiefs, all types of people. Matter of fact, um, the biggest the biggest Klan state in the Union was not Mississippi or Alabama or Arkansas. It was Indiana. We had Klansmen at all levels of of government. So, you can look at all that up. We'll take a look. It's all online, right? And who was the president at the time? Woodrow Wilson, who was a big time KKK sympathizer. You know, he had screened the movie, The Original Birth of a Nation, which talks about the rise and celebrates the KKK, which led to the actual uh, resurgence of the Klan. He had screened that movie in the White House. His one of his good friends from college, Thomas Dixon, wrote the book known as The Klansman, which led to the D.W. Griffiths controversial, but also classic and innovative cinematic, cinematic uh, masterpiece, The Birth of a Nation. He said, you know, according to Wilson, it was as if writing history of lightning. You know, it's strange by Woodrow Wilson, not strange by him. I mean, he was a Dixie crack. He was born in Virginia. Uh, he was an educated, well-educated, uh, actually became governor of New Jersey. I believe he's the only president that had a doctorate or a PhD. Um, but he didn't learn how to read till he was almost a teenager, which is fascinating. But he was supported by black leadership at the time. He had people like W.E.B. Du Bois, even Ida B. Wells, a couple of well-known, recognized, powerful black leaders that got behind Woodrow Wilson for whatever reason, they thought he was the next coming of Lincoln. In reality, you could call him the anti-Lincoln, because as soon as he got into you know office as president, he resegregated Washington D.C. He resegregated Washington D.C., and so you got Washington D.C. a segregated because Washington D.C. is still a southern town. You no know, people talking about it's the East Coast. It's still below the Mason-Dixon line. It's still in the South. It's in a swamp, and uh, it's still a southern town. So with that said. You had the uh, Washington, D.C. riots would happen like uh, several days before the Chicago race riots. And normally when you talk about the Red Summer, they normally start with Chicago for whatever reason, which is strange. The Chicago race riot happened July 27, 1919, and it was caused by a black boy drowning in the uh, Great Lake named Eugene Williams. He was getting hit with stones by a white man who would not let him get, you know, to land. So I guess he was tired from swimming. I guess he cramped up, whatever, and died and drowned. So that started the race war, supposedly the Red Summer. But go to the D.C. riots that happened July 19th through the 24th. And whereas it was started by allegedly a white woman walking home from work named Elsie Stefnik. She was allegedly attacked, assaulted by, I guess, two black men for her umbrella. She fought them off, but you know, people like the you know, papers like the Washington Post, which was not the most powerful paper, it was not the Jeff Bezos Amazon control Washington Post of today, but actually was like the third most popular paper in the city of Washington back in 1919. They was the ones using yellow journalism, trying to cause a race war, trying to have white men attack uh black men. They actually suggested in their papers that white men should form posses and militias or whatever, lynch mobs to attack these black men, to put black men or black people back in their place. So this happened for several days where you had white mobs, including uh, police, the Home Defense League, which was, a, I guess, a part of the police, of the Washington, D.C. police going around 
hunting black folks, you know, white folks doing drive-bys on black people, neighborhoods, beating up any black person they could see, beating up, killing lynch, whatever you want to call it. But what made the the DC race war, race massacre, whatever you want to call it, unique was the fact that black folks start fighting back. Because not only you had white folks like lynch mobs and stuff, and white mobs and vigilantes fighting and killing black people, you had white men in military uniform to a Navy, Marines, killing other veterans, killing black veterans from World War I, killing black people, civilians. I thought they were supposed to make the world safe for democracy, but you had white men who were Marines, Navy, Army, going around with guns and bayonets, killing black people, beating up black people, right after they end of World War I. This is crazy to think about, right? And so Woodrow Wilson did not do anything to stop it, really. He let it go on for several days. Then black folks started buying up guns and bullets. They started fighting back. You had uh, veteran snipers from World War One on top of Howard Theater shooting at white folks, sniping them off. You had a black man named Thomas Armstead uh, in his car going down the street. This blazing guns of glory with other five other passengers. I think it was about seven or, or six people in the car, in his car. They were going around shooting up, you know, even shooting up horse, uh, a cop horse, killing the cop horse, uh, injuring or wounding or whatever. The rider uh, even shot a hole through a policeman's head. But they were going around, man, like set it off style, just going up and down the block, you know. Knocking them off, and then he ended up getting killed. Him and uh, one of his passengers, Jane Gore, got killed by the police, but the other people escaped. Uh, but you know, he had black folks fighting back, and that's when the, the white folks said, "Wait a minute, we're not used to these black folks fighting back. They're fighting back. They're actually protecting their their property and their lives." And so it could have been a lot more black folks got killed, and a significant number of white folks got killed. But when you look at the the numbers of uh, casualties from a race massacre. They're always very low. They're not really the truth. Because like, you think about four days of white folks just driving around killing black people indiscriminately, not getting charged, not fearing the law. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you at the end of the day it was more than 40 people getting killed. But what made the D.C. thing so powerful is a lot of white folks got killed. And they didn't want to talk about that, excluding police officers and military folks. Because the lady, the white lady who was allegedly assaulted by the black man, Elsie Stefanik, which was the catalyst for this. Her husband was a naval a aviator. So, you know, they're not only trying to protect white womanhood, but all this other stuff, but Ida B. Wells disproved this theory about protecting white womanhood because white women were known for seeking out relationships with black men. A lot of these relationships with black men were consensual. So, and really, like, the lynching thing and all this stuff was about keeping black folks in their place. So, you had this thing in D.C., you had an educated class of black folks, Howard University, you had black folks getting good, well-paid government jobs. So, you had a real black middle class uh, in D.C. So, you not just have poor blacks, but also had black middle class, educated black folks. You had black people who had PhDs who couldn't teach at universities and colleges. They were teaching at the local high schools. So you had some of the best high schools in the country were not white high school, were black high schools like Dunbar High School, which, which is now known as M Street High School. Same high school that uh, somebody like James Reese Europe went to. So you had all this going on. So this is why, you know, nothing happened in the vacuum. So people talking about, well, back then, 100 years ago, they were targeting black people. 100 years later with these shootings, I guess they're targeting uh immigration, illegal immigrants, and Mexicans. So, what has changed? They're still targeting black people. I'm sorry, but I wish more of us would know about this narrative to try to connect the dots. Connect the dots! La 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 la! Let's connect the dots about what's going on now and then uh, make the case for black folks receiving reparations. Because, you know, they're trying to get folks who are the so-called pioneers of gay marriage reparations. We are long overdue reparations. Because what they have done to black folks it's a generational trauma. It's a post-traumatic stress disorder or slave disorder. What well, we have to endure because, you no, know, we're always in a, a fight or flight mode of existence. And that's not healthy for the heart. You won't know why you got high blood pressure. You have a heart attacks and you have an aneurysm because you never can find a, a space where you can rest. 
you always nervous when the police officer get behind you while you're driving, things of that nature. So you got a fight or flight response in America always been violent. You know, Dr. King said that the greatest purveyor of violence on the planet is my own government. So American has always been violent. American history is nothing but a gangster rap album. You want to talk about gangster rap? American history is gangster rap. You know, it talks about murder, lynchings, and police brutality, rape, all this stuff, assault. This is American history. You can't make uh, an omelet without breaking a few eggs. That's America. That's America. Cu -cu -cu. So I want y'all to think about this. Mass shootings already existed. You think about Woodrow Wilson, like I said, he was a Klan sympathizer. He supported the Klan in his own way. And also, 100 years later, you got Donald Trump. You know, I had no problem with Donald Trump. But his father was an alleged Klansman. Donald Trump's father was a Klansman from Queens. Look up a New York Times article that mentioned Fred Trump's name from June, I believe, of 1927. I told Dick Gregory this. He didn't know this. From June 1927, that's a New York Times article that talks about a Klan rally turning violent, uh, the Klan fighting with the police, and a man has a name named Fred Trump from Queens arrested. Fred Trump from Queens. Donald Trump is from Queens. His dad from Queens. Started his uh, real estate empire in Queens, construction and real, real estate empire in Queens. Donald Trump's father uh, was a pimp from Germany. Now, they want to say he was a hotel, hotel owner and restaurant tour. He was a pimp. Take a look. It's all online. So, you know, <laughs> it's a fascinating thing. Donald Trump, who daddy was a alleged Klansman. Then 100 years ago, the President of the United States was an alleged Klan sympathizer, Woodrow Wilson. So you see how it works. So yesterday is race massacres. Today is mass shootings. So I'm just trying to get you all to think bigger and bigger. So don't ask yourself what happened yesterday or just today. Ask yourself what happened 50 years ago, 75 years ago, 100 years ago, so on and so on. Then you start seeing the pattern. You see what well, this is not happening in the vacuum. America is guilty as hell. America has always been violent. Uh, think about it. You know, 50 years ago, uh, on you know, December marked the 50th anniversary of the assassination, the state assassination of Fred Hampton Jr. and Mark Clark uh, by the FBI utilizing the Chicago police and the Illinois state's attorney's office. So the state is very violent. It will conspire against its own citizens to stop uh, its own citizens from realizing their greater potential in order to realize a better today and tomorrow. So this is nothing new. And I'm glad that um, I have the willpower and I was thinking about, I, I got to share this information because a lot of times people don't understand. I don't share everything I know because it's hard, because life is hard. I'm trying to pay these bills. I'm working. I'm doing a lot of things, but it's encouraging to see people out in the streets. You say, Brother Ron, we love what you're doing. Thank you for doing this. You have taught me a lot. You have turned me on to some things I was not aware of. But at the same time, we got to start supporting people that do these type of things. Because, I mean, I'm getting older and stuff like that, I'm thinking about other things. But I'm glad that I have done something that's been utilized by the people. But people must support uh platforms like these and people and other organizations doing stuff to empower people because I'm doing things not only online but offline that I'm passionate about that I'm sharing with other people. I'm trying to bring people along with me as I make this journey uh, through life so we all can help a fighting chance but this is why you should support platforms like what I'm doing because who else is talking about the connection between the Red Summer 2019 and the Red Summer 2020? And I just gave you stuff that they don't talk about, like the D.C. situation where black folks actually fought back because they, they always flood in our, our minds with this thing about black victimhood and so-called white supremacy. And we really we should get away from saying the word supremacy because they're not supreme. And I was in a supermarket. I always mean these people that know who I am in Kroger's. I don't care what Kroger it is. You know, it's people that are brother wrong. We all be. But I was talking to this brother. He said he's a listener of mine. And he was talking about, I was to tell him, you know, he was saying, well, I was talking some mentions. I said, brother, we all live in a matrix with seven different versions of reality. I mean, seven billion different versions of reality, at least seven billion different versions of reality. We're living in a matrix. And what I'm trying to have him understand is that there's nothing supreme about a people. 
they cannot be supreme without undermining and obstructing other people's rights to exist and to fulfill their own dreams. Like, you know, it's a it's really a shame that so-called black people feel they must always fight this race fight, uh, this need to be validated by white folk. I ain't saying all of us, but it was like, think about how many talented people that we have had, ancestors, people living today that had they not had to deal with white folks' BS and insecurities, they could have made greater contributions to the world. I think about Paul Robeson. This man was so gifted, one of the greatest singers of all time, could speak like 20-something different languages, was a phenomenal athlete, one of the great early football players, was a lawyer, was an actor, you know, but yet he sacrificed his career to stand up for the voiceless and the marginalized and the invisible people. Had he not done that, you know, had he been allowed to flourish as a creative genius, you know, what could have been, you know, and the thing about it is I noticed it's a trend among us. I mean, so-called black people that the people who really help us the most, who really sacrifice their careers and even lives. A lot of times we don't remember. We don't forget. We forget. We don't remember. Uh, we just forget. You know, we just don't pick up where they left off at. You know, we don't bury the man and continue to plan as Dr. John Wilk, like John Henry Clark would say. Henry Clark would say, excuse me, John Henry Clark, bury the man and continue to plan. So now we'll say, well, we need another so-and-so and we need another so-and-so. So no, you just need to be you and be willing to find something that you're willing to die for and put your life on the line for and be the best version of you you can be. So with that said, I also look at the mass shootings, the so-called shooters, they all have this same blank stare. That's my control maturing candidate MK Ultra. And uh let me tell y'all a secret too. So y'all say, well, so and so they on the mind control, they program. We all program. Repeat, we all program. Certain things could trigger any one of us to quite possibly do what those guys did. You know, there's certain triggers out there. We all operate on different frequencies. Like people talking about, well, we're not on the same frequency. A lot of us are not on the same frequency. We're on different levels of frequencies, uh, frequencies, excuse me, and vibrations, right? What they do with the music. That's mind control. I say, well, Manson was a musician, right? He was in the mind control. He said he was a ma master hypnotist, right? He was able to get these so-called family people that he was that was part of his organization, the Manson family, to do these unspeakable things. They act like they was under a spell. Like with Hitler, you look at uh, Hitler videos or film, his body language, gestures, maybe his cadence and his words, the way he spoke, it hypnotized people. Uh, my understanding, Hitler actually worked with uh, some type of magician or illusionist or, you know, somebody that was in the hip, hip, hypnosis, illusion and stuff like that. He worked with him on his body language and the way I guess he spoke. Because people, I like, it was on the spell because we talked to people from Germany years later. They were like, you know, we didn't know what we was doing. We was on a spell, like he had us hypnotized, da, da, da. You look at a lot of politicians, the way they do hand gestures and the way they speak. Uh, all this stuff is a game. So we all program to a certain degree by the music, by the TV, by the movies, uh, by the politicians, by a lot of things. And then they tamper with our food and water and our you know, air. Like, you know, they talk about chemtrails, you talk about manganese, malt liquor, lead in the pipes. So it affects your behavior. You know, we are, you know, look at the violence in one on Chicago, people killing each other like crazy all weekend. What's going on? Is it them doing it themselves or are they under the influence of some type of, you know, manganese, lead, chemtrails? Uh, you know, think about, I know in Memphis, they got a Kellogg's plant right next to the old Army Depot grounds. And that ground has been tested. It's contaminated. So, you know, why you have a Kellogg's cornflakes place making cornflakes next to contaminated land? on top of contaminated land. So really, y'all worry about guns and bullets, but the stuff you eating every day for cereal might be the thing really killing you. You know, think about all this stuff that's going on. So MK, MK Ultra, all this stuff is real. If you look at the Beatles, right? The Beatles, they came over right to America right after the Kennedy assassination. You know, the Warren Commission came out. 
and people was not feeling the Warren Commission, what they do? They bring over the Beatles. The Beatles uh, are a product, allegedly, of the Tavistock Institute. Look up Tavistock Institute. Uh, the Beatles were brought to America to distract the Americans from being curious about what really happened to JFK. That's one of the reasons uh, to get the youth culture hooked on to drugs. Think about the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. That's LSD. Hey Jude deals with heroin. If you don't believe me, Baba Dick Gregory talks about this. He was the guru for John Lennon and Yoko Ono. He got them detox. He got them off of drugs. They brought them over to Europe. They were living in a cave mansion. And he got them off of drugs. Dick Gregory was an inspiration for John Lennon's Imagine, one of, his big, one of the biggest songs of all time, was written by the help and inspiration of Baba Dick Gregory. And John Lennon acknowledged this. But John Lennon also told Dick how the music industry used him and the Beatles to try to hook kids on drugs, about mind control through the music. And the next thing you know, you know, John Lennon's dead in front of his residence, the Dakota, in New York City, 1980, allegedly killed by Mark David Chapman, who could have, according to the lead investigator on the case, could have got away, but he waited for the police to show up, to be arrested. Allegedly, you know, he was he had a blank stare. Allegedly, he was inspired by the book uh, written by J.D. Salinger, Catcher in the Rye, to kill Lennon for whatever reason. But the doorman at the Dakota was actually a Cuban national who was a known assassin for the CIA. Y'all can look all this up online. And I think my David Chapman was due to get out or was due up for uh, parole, whatever, either this year or last year. I don't know when, but he probably denied him. You can look that up too. And so think about what I'm saying. Like you look at the El Paso guy. Look at the Ohio guy. They had those same blank Manchurian stairs. And you know LSD was uh, created by the government. You know, think about Fort Detrick. You know, Frank Olson, the scientist who was thrown out a window of a hotel on the, I think, on the 13th floor in Manhattan back in the 50s. CIA scientist who would be got, about to become a whistleblower. You can check out the Netflix series Wormhole that talks about that case where he wasn't exposed government for, uh, you know, drugging people with LSD and other stuff. Fort Dictor, Maryland, where they invented LSD. Uh, you look all that up. So I'm just telling you, I'm just dropping this stuff. And I wonder who's going to really pick up on what I'm saying. So even the video games, you know, they're programming people. Uh, they, de they are really desensitizing us to violence because America is such a violent place. You know, think about, I remember when I saw on, what was it, 2020, some years ago? It was 2020 or 60 Minutes, where they interviewed Saddam Hussein in one of his homes in Iraq. And he had this, he was a big fan of gangster movies. So he had this huge collection of uh, Hollywood gangster movies like Godfather, Scarface, stuff like that. I thought I was looking at Yo! MTV Cribs, like they were interviewing a gangster rapper or something like that. So, yeah, man, don't keep caught sleeping at the wheel. Also, before I go, we talk about Kennedy assassination, all this stuff. Check out, look up Operation Northwoods. Operation Northwoods. Operation Northwoods was a thing that they wanted President Kennedy to do. Uh, the military complex, the intelligence community, want him to get involved in this thing where he created false flags so they could get into a war with Cuba and Russia. Operation Northwoods. Kennedy refused it and, and, and until doing like terror terroristic uh events on american soil so it would be inside jobs so you they said we'll orchestrate mass shootings at theaters and football stadiums blowing up historic landmarks thing of that nature and kennedy said hell no we're not gonna do that against american citizens one of the things that probably cost him his life he refuses to go along with the military industry complex and with the intelligence community that probably one of the things that put the nail in the coffin for him uh, so, look up Operation Northwoods, right? And also, I tell people, Germany lost World War II, but the Nazis did not. Look up Operation Paperclip, where the Nazi war criminals were, criminals were allowed to to escape justice and prosper in the, at the Central Intelligence Agency, at the NASA, the space program we got, and uh, Big Pharma and other you know areas of human activity. 
it's at the end of the movie Inglorious Bastards by Quentin Tarantino. That's a very interesting movie. You know, at the end with Brad Pitt's character is kind of like a George Patton type of dude. I mean, he carved that uh, swastika in the forehead of of the German because the German guy, they could not kill him because Uncle Sam said we're going to use him for our own ends and, you know, make sure that the dude never forget who he really was, Brad Pitt or anybody else who would count this guy. He just carved the swastika in his forehead. So, yeah, that's what they did. So we don't even know that Hitler really died. Cause we never really found a body. They found some so-called DNA, maybe a pieces of a jaw, but you know who knows. So that's it for now, boys and girls. I hope I gave y'all enough food to chew on, chew food for thought to chew on. And thank you for supporting the movement. If you like the words from Brother Herb, please spread the word. Uh, please share this with your networks. Please subscribe to our channel. I want we all BTV to get a hundred thousand subscribers before the end of the year. And I need your help to do this. If y'all really benefiting from the material, please let people know what the source is. Why can I not be successful? If I'm helping you be successful, help me be successful. So that's the way it works. Synergy, uh, reciprocity, you understand? So you can support the movement. Uh, cash app is dollar sign R2C2H2. That's dollar sign R2C2H2. PayPal and Google Pay. Email is R2C2H2 at gmail.com. That's R2C2H2 at gmail.com. Uh, buy Art of His Art. That's R2C2H2.com. Also, wear Art of His Art. Go to our Teespring uh, official cafe or R2C2H2 place. That's R2C2H2's place. You can actually access that down at the, uh, we got the shelf with our gear, doing with the clothes. Click on that. It'll send you to the site. You know, because I mean, I know I'm a very talented dude. Y'all know I'm a very talented guy, right? So it says support the movement because knowledge is the currency of the universe. And we want to keep on putting ourselves in a position where we can win. So we can win. So everybody can win. It's a win-win for everybody. So thank you all for listening, for uh, utilizing the information, for sharing the information. Because once again, knowledge is the currency of the universe. In the words of Duke Elton, we love you madly. Keep producing and pushing. Peace.